Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is the work of the Anglophone group. Uh, so, can we start? Okay, for the first question about the current st status of uh, our INDC, uh, uh, in the ENDC process, uh, we are all agreed, we already have uh, some policies and guidelines, uh, some documents which we can use. Mainly we talk about the NAPA and also the National Strategy on Adaptation. So we agree, and, and then also small projects. So we agree with these documents, we can, we believe we already start in something. But in terms of uh, start the process, uh, just Maldives, they already at least have the first meeting with the stakeholders, but the other countries, they are not yet. But we plan to do, I believe, until August or something. So this is it. Next one. Uh, in terms of challenge, uh, we discuss a lot on this because we have a lot of challenge. And But mainly uh, we need uh, uh, support in, and with technical expertise. Uh, we have uh, some technical expertise, but it's not it's not enough. Uh, somebody asked, but we, you did the, the first and second communication. So how you did that? So we use them, but we we still need it. And uh, also, um, uh, this technical support are related to guide us how to start with our INDCs and uh, how to uh, to address all to put the different actions we already done and on the way to make our uh, INDC uh, document. Uh, the time is uh, also one of the big uh, challenge we have. We don't have enough time. And most of countries, uh, they, they, they don't have the national uh, consultant to, to guide the process, so we also need it. And um, also uh, planning, planning. It's a very, it's a very big challenge also because it's di it's difficult to us to say, okay, in ten years we'll 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 do this. It's easy to say in five years because the our governance is in five five and five years, so it's easy to say in five years. But more than five, it's not easy. Uh, so. Uh, also, in terms of economy, uh, our economy is dependent, so we need uh, we have a challenge on that. And uh, for example, and the other challenge it's about the security. And this is, we took uh, the example of Afghanistan. So, but most of uh, African countries we have the same problem. And, and also the internal coordination in different sectors. So the different sectors have done uh, something, but we don't have. Uh, uh, it's look like um, a, a place uh, or institution or uh, uh, some some place we can find all the information about it. Uh, maybe it's not exactly where we can find it, but uh, because most of us we have the unit of climate change or something, but the coordination is not good. So this is some of challenge we have. So the next one. Uh, in terms of uh, specific goals and targets, so uh, we are we have the, a lot of discussion on this also, because we already have our NAPs and the our NAPs we have a lot of activities on on there. So, but we agree on reduce the climate, uh, reduce climatic inducing um, migration, and this we are talk about. Um, I think we'll need the help on this. I will jump into the other one. <laughs> yeah, because this is the case of uh, uh, Fiji. Yeah? So, the case of Fiji, yeah? okay. in Maldives. Yeah? To the another, yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But mainly, the reduce the vulnerability. This is uh, definitely for all. Okay, uh, improve the food security, uh, climate smart agriculture, and uh, also in the coastal manage and uh, uh, coastal area management. Uh, the, the example of the mangroves. This I think I, I don't need to explain because this is it's clear. So next one, 
in terms of priority and actions, uh, what we we have we, what we have been doing, and uh, we're trying to improve the microfinance in the uh, local areas. Uh, we have worked a lot in the market assess uh, L1 system. Mm, these kinds of activity, mainly the L1 system, you can find in our NAPs. We have this in most of countries. Uh, water use efficiency and even and also in droughts, salt toler tolerant crops, and coastal rehabilitation in terms of forests. We are talk uh, here. We are talk about uh, on mangroves. Policy development and also some uh, research on the mainly climate research. So we can jump in. And the last one, I believe, in terms of su support, this ki the kinds of support we need. Well, uh, here uh, at the beginning we say technical support is the most important we we need now. So in in technical support we talk about the data collection. And mainly, or oh, as I said, um, um, to define the baseline, because and we have a problem with the data, uh, too many gaps in our data, and even the the first year, the beginning. So we have to clarify a bit about that, and uh, we also we need the technical support to prioritize the sectors, because we have a lot of data. And a lot of setters involved, so but we don't know which one we have to prioritize, which one we have to take to put in our INDC. So this is uh, some kinds of uh, support we need, and um, uh, this one about the loss of institutional knowledge. Here we are talk about, uh, for example, we are here. We have been capacity to do something. But for instance, when we go back to my country and um, my minister say, okay, now you have to move to another minister. So it means uh, we will have a gap on that. So these kinds of, uh, we need to find a way how to solve these kinds of, uh, these kinds of, uh, of problem. And the uh, capacity building, of course, uh, here, you can see in brackets because uh, it's a bit about uh, mitigation, but okay, it's, uh, it's very important, but I think the main one uh, for now it's or orientation relate on the time framework we have. So we need a very good orientation, and to discuss with all, uh, we talk a lot about the engagement of the private sector, because when we talk about adaptation, at the end we have to talk about the monitoring and evaluation. And to have uh, the indicators to monitor and evaluation, it means we have to do something. And to um, the government for themselves, it's not enough. We need uh, support from the uh, the private sector. So how to engage the private sector in this process? So I believe this is something. If I miss something, please, my colleagues can help me. Thank you. Um, so I thought I would then start on this section on identifying and prioritising gaps and barriers. Um, this is like the glue that brings the target and the needs together. So it's crucial. So let's have a look what we're talking about here. What's a gap? Put simply, it's this. The difference between what is needed in terms of adaptation, i.e. the red line, and what is currently realised in terms of access to funds, capacity building, monitoring and evaluation systems. The gaps are, sorry, okay, I'm gonna have to go back to old school, are these, these lines, and then you have barriers, which are the, 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 Perhaps um, they can be many things, but things that actually hinder the progress from what is currently happening to where you want to be. That's how we should think about this. A nice little definition uh, is that barriers adversely affect or prevent the implementation or realisation of a target. Is, what did, did we measure in the, uh, this uh, slide? 
the vertical axis, yes. it could be anything. It doesn't have to be a number. It could be, for instance, in the health sector, it could be that a certain percentage of the population is disease-free by a certain year. It could be a qualitative target. So this on the vertical axis. So then it would just be your goal, your adaptation target in your INDC. Right. So what do you, there, I mean, and then also, as was mentioned before in the previous presentation, the target doesn't necessarily have to be one target that overarches all of your different sectors. It could be a sectoral target. So this is completely up to the countries themselves to determine what types of targets they want to have on this vertical axis. It could be many different gaps and they don't all have to look like this. They don't all have to have gaps and barriers. Dans ce cas-là, on peut dire que euh, le gap, c'est quantitatif et la, et la barrière, c'est qualitatif? Uh, not, not necessarily. Okay. Um, Whatever is on your vertical axis, it depends on what your target is. If your target is quantitative, for instance, you have a certain percentage of your population that is... Um, food secure or has energy access, access to clean energy, this is a quantitative target. Your gap will be how much you need to actually get to this target. That's the idea, right? Okay. So maybe just to add, that also means that gaps are closely related to needs, because if, if the gap is what prevents you, what what prevents you from realizing a given target, that would at the same time be an indication of your need. Okay. So um, if we just keep that in mind, this previous graph, is this, this is where you want to be in whatever target you have. It might be quantitative, qualitative, and you're currently undertaking something and you just need to get to this target. This is what you've written in your INDC adaptation component. So how do we actually identify these gaps and barriers? So the first main step, and, and now this is actually outlined in the guidance note as well, so I'll just go slowly through um, some of these steps. But the first one is to develop a common understanding of the adaptation target that needs to be met at the national level and at project-specific levels. So once an adaptation target has been agreed upon within the country or in the climate change group who is in charge of developing the INDC, there needs to be some common understanding of whether this target is an overarching target covering all the sectors, whether we're specifically focusing on one sector, whether we're looking at just policy development, we need to understand where our target is. So for instance, I'm giving the example of Mexico. So Mexico has, um, has a different approach and a different layout than some of the ones that have emerged, like Morocco and Ethiopia. Uh, they have quantitative as well as qualitative targets. For instance, reach a rate of zero deforestation by the year 2030. That's a very quantitative target. They want to reforest high, medium and low watersheds. Number three, they want to conserve and restore ecosystems. So these last two are, are quite qualitative. They've also said that they want to protect priority species, that they want to increase carbon capture and strengthen coastal protection, and then they want to guarantee the integral management of water for all their different uses. So these types of targets are very, very different. The next step will be to then review the activities or actions which may already be underway in your countries and further measures that need to be taken. So in this sense, once we have a common understanding of what our target is, what, what do we need to do to actually reach our target? And here I'm just going to present a very brief table on a very simple tool as well. Um, and now we had a discussion in our group that, that in a lot of these countries, there are so many sectors to actually prioritise, so where to start? So this could be a really good way to actually start um, the process. And this was actually used by Japan in their adaptation planning, 
where they actually went on the left-hand side, they went with the categories, um, looking at natural ecosystems, productive ecosystems. You could choose the categories how you like. Then they went into the different sectors and the subsectors of that. Then they had a brainstorm on the, the, the I mean, not the brainstorm, but the listing of the impacts in these particular subsectors. And then against three uh, main categories, that is the significance of this sector, um, the urgency on how, how urgent it should be addressed, and the confidence. The confidence is based on the IPCC assessment report on how likely they think the impact's going to happen. So against these three criteria, they did a very qualitative sorting of, okay, for instance, biodiversity in forest. I'm using the Mexico case again, that species extinction in Mexico should, could sharply increase. What is the significance of this? It's very high, urgency very high, and the confidence, according to the IPCC assessment report, is also very high. So that through this process, they were able to prioritise, okay, this might be a particular sector that we should really look at, we should really do something about. So in that, you've got your list of focus sectors, focus areas that you want to look at. Then you look at what is actually underway at the moment. And again, I use the case of Mexico because they've, they've outlined their targets already in their INDC. And in their particular case, they have a nationwide pest program, which is actually related to payments for avoiding deforestation and for reforestation. And it's this CONAFOR program, the national program, which is already underway. So the target that they have actually written into the INDC is something that they're already engaged in. And this is, again, a discussion we had in our group, that there are a lot of activities that you're currently undertaking that are most probably going to be still a part of this adaptation target. You want to be somewhere, but you're already doing things at the same time. Then, how do we identify the, the gaps and barriers? Then it's about collectively brainstorming and listing where the gaps are. So we're doing some stuff in some areas. Where else, where else are we missing action? So this can be done through expert and stakeholder interviews. For instance, going to the different ministries and talking to them about what the gaps and barriers could be. Focus group discussions, analysing recent policy papers, feasibility analyses, case studies, you know, going through secondary data, these types of, um, of methods. And this is where it, it kind of glues this gaps and barriers identification process is kind of gluing the targets to the needs now. So we have our target at the very top, which we have all have a common understanding on. We have our current undertakings. This is what we're already doing. So in the Mexico case, they wanted to conserve and reforest. They're already doing a payments um, for reforestation program. So that's what they're doing. So this is our gap or barrier, or actually this is our gap. On one, the one hand, there are gaps which we can solve domestically. So we know, aha, uh -huh, in our country, we do have the capacity to, for instance, better manage our water resources because we've got a large re research centre on water. This is something we can solve domestically. This is something that we require external assistance for. We don't have that capacity. Like, for instance, developing a GHG baseline or you know, something along those lines where you know that there is not the capacity to fill this gap. And this will form the basis for your needs, which is the, the subject of the next section. In terms of prioritising gaps and barriers, and again, I'm coming back to, back again, but it's because when we do these brainstorming exercises, looking at the gaps and barriers in all the different sectors, you could come up with thousands, probably even more. So it's a matter of identifying what what exactly um, would be the most essential ones that we need to actually focus our attention on and what could actually inform our needs. And this is a very simple matrix which you could actually use in a, some type of stakeholder workshop, for instance. We've got two axes. What is the importance of this gap and barrier to actually achieving your target? 
and your ease of removal. How easily can it be removed? Is it something that requires a lot of input and a lot of stakeholder involvement and a lot of other factors which are out of our control? Or is it actually something that we can relatively take care of quite easily? So these are the two axes. In this corner, we've got a low importance and the ease of removal is low. Sorry, the, the colour's a bit white here. But this corner are the gaps and barriers that are less necessary for the realisation of a target and that we've got low control in overcoming the gap of low control in overcoming the gap and barrier and thereby this is more of a lower priority gap and barrier that you should be concentrating on. In this quadrant we have a gap or barrier that is less necessary for the re realisation of the target but we've got high control over overcoming that barrier. So this is lower priority to actually deal with and this is something you can actually deal with internally with your own resources because you've got a lot of control to overcome this. Then we move into the higher sections. In this quadrant, this is necessary for the realisation of the target, i.e. we need to overcome this gap, we need to overcome this barrier in order to reach our adaptation target. And we also have a high control in overcoming that, i.e. the capacity is within our country to be able to get rid of the barrier or overcome that gap. So this is labelled high priority internal. Finally, in this quadrant, we have a gap or barrier which is necessary for the realisation of the target, but the country itself has low control over overcoming that gap and barrier. So this is high priority this is external. So these types of gaps could be generally things that you do not have at your hands in your country. And these, again, would be the basis of your needs. These, these are, are basically informing what type of needs could actually go into your INDC. So actions that require assistance. So we had a, a big talk about the support there. So what could they be? They could be gaps and barriers that can't be solved domestically and they would inform your needs, as I just mentioned. And back to our, our Mexico example, you saw that in the first part of the target that they're already undertaking these payments, service, payments programs for their reforestation targets. Then they had a whole another section of targets which were about um, um, better management of water, um, coastal protection. And if you read in the INDC, their request for technology is exactly on this, is exactly on we need water technologies for savings, recycling, capture irrigation and sustainable management for agricultural purposes. We need transport technologies that are resilient to the adverse effects of climate change, in particular for roads and massive transportation. We need technology for the protection of coastal and river infrastructure. So their needs that they've actually expressed answer their realisation of that target. And then I thought I would just give you an example of one of the newer INDCs that have come out, which is Morocco, who actually um, in, a, in a logical way identified where their goals are and what they need to do. So they've got goals for both 2020 and 2030. They've outlined all of their current actions in terms of the policies and programs that they have in place currently to meet those goals. And then they've identified where the gaps and barriers are, which actually are informing their needs. And ma their needs are mainly financial, but they also have requested capacity um, support in terms of data and knowledge sharing, project implementation and monitoring and evaluation. So that's, that's another style of, of presenting an INDC, but this is just sh goes to show the importance of kind of understanding your target, first of all, what you're actually wanting to achieve, what you're currently doing, and what's in between. And when you're looking at what's in between, what you can do in your own country, and what you need assistance on, which will inform your needs. Very simple, maybe oversimplistic way of putting it, but this is a start at least in... in kind of helping structure some of your stakeholder workshops perhaps. So 
that's all I have. And I think maybe we can break and have some coffee and cake and then come back and have a case example of the prioritisation process of adaptation technologies from the TNA. Thank you. Thank you.